Well, thank you very much for that fantastic intro, Sharon. Um, without you and your team, there's no way that us developers and app builders could be wrangled to create all of these great solutions for the App Exchange. Um, and so I'm Stefan Chandler Garcia. Uh, I have brown hair and blue eyes in front of a white wall. Um, and I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce. Um, if you have any questions after today's session, you can reach me on stefan.garcia at salesforce.com or at stefanwcg. Yeah, and hi everyone. Um, thanks for that great intro, Sharon. Um, so I'm Andrew Patterson. I'm the product manager for Privacy Center, uh, which has recently launched. Um, I have brown eyes, um, gray hair and a beard, and I'm sat in front of a bookshelf with various Salesforce goodies on it. Perfect. And today we're going to be talking about some of the tips and tricks we have for creating amazing user interface. Now, first off, as Sharon's just told you as well, um, please make any purchasing decisions based off of our currently available products and not any future features or functionality that we might be talking about today. Now, just a quick overview of what we're going to be going through. We're going to give just a bit of an introduction into user interface design and what it means around Salesforce. We're going to talk to our experience building Salesforce Labs apps and let you know our top five tips and tricks for creating amazing interactive UIs, and then let you go with some resources that you can take away to help build them yourselves. Now, Andrew and I have both, both built a number of apps for Salesforce Labs. We've built loads of applications for Salesforce through many years as admins, developers, architects. Um, and what we really want to do today is take you behind the scenes of building apps for Salesforce Labs and let you know what we've really learned getting our hands dirty building these solutions that are ready for the App Exchange. Um, three of the solutions we're going to be talking about today um, are ones that we built together. The first of those is the multi-org security summary that brings together multiple security health checks from your Salesforce orgs, maybe if you have a multi-org setup and brings them all into a single org, single user interface, and allows you to visualize and interact with those health checks. Uh, we have an experienced cloud cookie consent component that gives your users or customers the experience of interacting with cookies and confirming or declining those when they hit an experienced cloud site. And lastly, our lightning messaging utility app that allows you to display messages to your users uh, using the design system specifications, which we'll get to quite a bit in a minute. So first off, Andrew's gonna talk us a little bit about UI and Salesforce. Uh, thanks, Stefan. Yeah, so I think one of the first ones is simple and easy to use. I think we've all seen this on a requirements document or it gets mentioned by our users. Um, and what we really mean by that is that the applications that we build should guide users in what needs to be done. So if I'm looking at a page or whether, where I am in the application, it should be obvious where I need to go to do the action I need to do. Um, and the next key factor with that is also that we should provide just enough context to complete a task. So in Salesforce, you can end up with 600 fields on a record. It's not a good idea to kind of throw them all on the page. So just give enough context to the user whittle it down uh, and to the things that the user needs to see to do the job they need to do. And then if you take that across to Salesforce, as I just mentioned, the key thing for a great UI in Salesforce is that it follows the rules. And by that, what we mean is that it looks and feels like Salesforce. So if I'm inside Salesforce and I'm clicking through the application, I move from the standard Salesforce sales cloud, service cloud into our custom application, it should look and feel the same as Salesforce. And I think the jarring experience we all see now is when we switch to something which has classic UI. I think that's a good example where suddenly you're in this different environment and it stands out. You're suddenly like, this, this is different. Um, and then the other key factor around that is that the screens you build, the applications you build, the components and things you put together, try and break it down into reusable components because that's what gives you that flexibility in Salesforce to put various kind of bits of functionality in different places on the screen. It means it's flexible for the admins. They can change the UI, obviously, as they want. But also for users, it means that, that screens flow and there's not these big blocks of kind of application that, that don't make sense. Things can just be put in different places and, and flow nicely. So on that, taking away some of those sort of characteristics that a lot of people will see and what's kind of defined as a great user interface and trying to keep things really seamless with that Salesforce experience, 
Um, we're going to take you now through those top five tips and tricks that we've learned by building apps for Salesforce Labs. And the first of those is that you have to really know the Lightning design system. Yeah, and the great tip, this, this is a great tip because this is a provided uh, website from Salesforce at lightningdesignsystem.com or just go and uh, search for SLDS and you'll generally get there. Uh, and what it essentially gives you is uh, design guidelines and principles for building your applications. It does actually cover multi-platform, so we're focusing on Salesforce today, um, but it gives you the how and why you should use different layouts and features. Uh, and today, we're just going to highlight some of the key ones from that uh, as we go through. So firstly, starting off with blueprints, and these are probably the main ones you look at. And what they tell you is how a particular element is actually constructed. So here, we're moving from kind of what it looks like, and then here we can see the page header, to actually underline that there's some code which you can copy and paste into your component and use that to then construct a, a component, uh, put that on the screen, put it in a, a component we dragged to be a header. And as you see on the right-hand side, there's different variants of a page header. So you can have uh, a record page, an object page, um, different headers and different variants. It gives you all of those. And so taking this as an example from our multi-org security setup application, we needed to pop something on the screen to give the users a guide and step them through some functionality. So the instant one to go to is the modal header. And so you can see the design blueprint on the left-hand side, and we move across that onto the, uh, the actual application. And what we've done there is we've copied that code, put it inside our component, dropped our pieces in where they needed to go, and we've avoided having to spend a lot of time doing custom coding. We've got a consistent UI to a user. It feels and looks like Salesforce, uh, and we've not had to do a lot of heavy lifting. And, and all that CSS and that pop-up is all automatically built for you. Um, the other key thing is the utilities that come with the Lightning Design System, and Grid is, a, is one of the major ones of those. And what this does, it lets you start laying out your components and telling them how they should fit into that, that page. So a Salesforce page is always built around this kind of 12-column uh, grid, and it lets you control what size this component should take. So you can say, okay, take out one half of the screen, so you can set it to size one of two and things like that. And it lets you control your layout, and it's really useful for... Um, just making sure your components fit automatically. You, you can control how they should fit into the page. And then finally, I think icons really, you know, as it says here, they have a lot to say. And the key thing here is that all those standard icons in Salesforce, all those action icons and utility icons are all built into the Salesforce Lightning Design System. And what this means is you can use these icons to give it a visual clue to users what that button does. So add is quite an obvious one. Um, but by having a button with just a, that icon in it and automatically kind of using those design systems that Salesforce uses just means that for a given user, it's consistent UI and it's kind of guiding them in what they need to do. And it's obvious what's going to happen. Brilliant. Now, our second tip is to design before you build. And this is a lesson that I think we've all learned at some point in our careers as, as app builders is that it might be instinctual to just go into Salesforce and start making some changes. It might be easy enough to just open VS Code, create a Lightning Web Component, and just start writing code. However, chances are that a lot of that code is going to end up being thrown away. And by taking the time to actually design what you are about to build, especially from a front-end perspective, gives you the opportunity to get feedback on those designs, to share them with your users before you actually start writing those components or those apps. Um, and it really helps you to just, just plan as early as you can so that you can start getting those designs together. Because once you get those finalized, you can just start writing the code and you'll have your component done in no time. Now, this is made very easy through a tool called Sketch. Now, Sketch is a, an application that allows you to really quickly prototype up your applications, draw out your screens before you start building them. And there's a very handy SLDS plugin that we've created for Sketch. So we have all of those component blueprints that Andrew was just talking about, the grid, the icons. Those are all available for you to just drag and drop right into your canvas so that you can very quickly and easily build out these pages before you start writing code. So you can go ahead and find that at the link below. We'll share the links later, but it's a, a super great tool for you to have in your tool belt. Now, an example of this where it was very useful was in the cookie consent component. Now, there are many ways, shapes, and forms that gathering consent for cookies can take on a page. And I thought it would be best to try and mock this up, share it with loads of users to see what kind of feedback we could get. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the actual mock-ups in Sketch that we created before actually building out this LWC. 
And then on the right hand side, you can see the final product. And by the time it got to actually writing the code for the application, I, I was finished in no time, maybe three or four hours, because I knew already what the underlying data was. I knew what the design was, and I could literally just go and reference some base components. You can see here we have some drop downs, we have some toggles, we have some tables, all standard components that we can go and pull from the Lightning design system to build out these components really quickly and easily. Now, tip number three is to plan your app's form factor. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, so an application is going to generally consist of these three main layers. So you've got your backend functionality. You're going to be writing some Apex. You're hopefully going to have some flows in there. You're going to be processing data. And then that you start surfacing that up to the end users through Lightning components. And those components can be sat in different kind of different types of components and provide different things like toolbars or modals and so on. Uh, but the idea is you take your components, you take the standard components that come with Salesforce, you take your custom components, you take components from App Exchange, and then you compose those into applications through App Builder or on a tab or in a Lightning app. The key thing to note is that each of these apps is going to be really, it's based around that page layout. And so just highlighting here, we're looking at a record page layout. It has that standard feel, you know, the, the top banner, top header, and then a two thirds, one third layout. Just when you're building your application, just think through the components you're building of how are they going to fit into this page? Because the UI fitting on the kind of two thirds of that screen is, a, is going to be a lot different to the one third. And you also need to think through things like modal pop-ups and flows, um, because those add extra things around what you do. So modal pop-up would always sit in the center of the screen, generally be a square shape. So you, you know, your, your component needs to kind of fit there. Inside of Flow, you're going to have a framework with buttons like Next and Previous and the wrappers around that. And so just think through when you're building your component, what happens if I'm in there? Do I Where do my buttons go? Where's my functionality going to fit in that screen? And then finally, you know, we're talking about Salesforce here, but we do have Experience Cloud and mobile. And, and Experience Cloud is great for end users because they, they've got a kind of pixel perfect rendering they can do of where they want to put their components. They can put the menu down the left-hand side. You just need to think through if you're building components going through go inside that experience cloud. You just need to think through, what does it mean? Because things are going to be probably slightly wider and you want to have that control, make sure that you don't have text that's too small and large gaps on your application. And finally, with mobile, you just need to consider, is it going to make sense this component to be sat on a mobile screen or do I need to just do a, a different version of this page, which maybe renders the list uh, differently. So rather than having you know 10 columns across the page, it just has kind of goes down the page and has a summary of the information. I'm just going through some examples of these. So here we're looking at the Action Plan Visualizer, which is part of, uh, which is an add-on kind of built for Financial Services Cloud. So inside Action Plans in Financial Services Cloud on this screen you see on the left, it's built to be in a single kind of page, stretches out nicely, gives you lots of information. What I found through talking to customers through demos and so on uh, was that actually often you want the Action Plan to sit on the right-hand side on Opportunity. So we just, we just did some quick work around actually rendering that information in a nice way that kind of provides all the same information, but does it in a smaller amount of screen space. So being able to kind of think through what's the difference between these two applications, where they're going to lie, and what does that mean to the end user? And then also, I think, tables versus cards. So inside Salesforce, we use a lot of list views. So it's a pretty standard list view. And so on the right-hand side, you can see the list view from Data Mask. Um, that's great. Um, for providing some information, and then ideally we want users to click in. But with something like Data Mask, when we considered it, it was often you're not going to have more than maybe five to 10 of these Data Mask jobs defined. So then that's where we built the card UI on the left-hand side. So taking that approach of saying, okay, let's have these not as a list view, but as a set of kind of big blocks that provide more information, a summary of what's inside that record. But also the great thing is by using the card layout, I can read, this will resize. So on a mobile, it'll actually fit across the page, just one record per each row, whereas inside the design system, inside the application, we can set it to say, okay, use up half of the screen. So I don't have to do that development work. It's kind of predefined for me. Perfect. And our, our next tip is to not forget messaging. Now, we're not talking about messaging as in sending someone a DM or chatting to your best friend. We're talking about messaging as in displaying messages to users on the screen. The Lightning Design System has comprehensive guidelines for how you display things like alerts, different types of prompts, maybe error popovers. Um, and it's very important for you to go in and start looking at these components. Now, one that's often forgotten 
um, by developers is the empty state component. So you'll be used to seeing these illustrations around Salesforce when data doesn't happen to be there or when there's no records available. And so it's important to make sure that you keep these in your apps and your components and surfacing them. I, I can't tell you the number of times that I've forgotten to and get to the, the com component, load it, there's no data and you have no feedback about that. And so it's really important to include these for your users. Now, to help you with this, there is a Salesforce Labs app that we both created after we both built about 2 million of these messaging components. Um, that just allows you to quickly define a message and send it to your users through the user interface. Um, it's called the Lightning Messaging Utility and it is available in the App Exchange. We'll throw the link up at the end for you to download it. But just a brief overview of it, it allows you to select the type of message right there in the app builder that you'd like to display to your users, define things like the text and title and share those messages. Just as an example, you can drag it right into the app builder. You can give it some properties like a title, you can set a variant and you can display it to your users when you need to based on the criteria that you set so that they're getting the right message at the right time. Now, our last tip is to always look for inspiration. And this is, this is something I do quite often. Uh, just always remember that when us internally as Salesforce developers, people who are working on the product, we're all working within those same rules and boundaries. And so if you ever get stuck for an idea for a page, always look for inspiration around your org. I think two great places to look are setup and service setup to look at some of the new apps and functionality that have been built and deployed into Salesforce. For example, um, this is the first iteration of sort of that landing page for the multi-org security summary. There's a lot wrong with it. Um, and we sort of looked to Salesforce for inspiration. And so we were able to identify we, that we really liked the space within the Salesforce optimizer setup page. We really liked the way that some metrics were displayed in the lightning usage page. And we're able to combine those into our final UI and take the best bits of both of those parts of the application and include them in our app and really drive the way that we were designing that page. Now, just as a quick recap, the Lightning Design System is super important and it really sets those rules of the road for building apps on Salesforce. Designing before you build will help you save time and money because you're not throwing away code that you could have worked through in the Canvas or in something like Sketch. Number three is plan your app's form factor. Always be aware of where your components are going to sit because the way you design them and the way you interact with them will be different based on those experiences. Messaging is super important. So use something like the Lightning Messaging Utility to make sure that you're displaying messages to your users in the correct way. And lastly, always look for inspiration. There are so many cool ways that Salesforce are building apps on Salesforce that you can look to for those design styles and those inspiration. Um, and you should really take a look at those and, and use those as much as you can. Um, we do have a few resources to share. We'll go ahead and put these in the chat afterwards. Um, but things like the Lightning Design System, the Sketch Toolkit, link to all of the great Salesforce Labs apps that we're going to be talking today. And even more importantly, there is a brand new certified user experience designer uh, certification that you can achieve. Um, and go check out all that information, follow the links below. Um, and it's something really great that you could put some time into. Now, thank you very much for attending the session. And we're looking forward to hearing about the rest of the great apps today. <laughs> <laughs>